<clears throat> okay, this is going to be the second video on nth term test, and I'm going to go ahead and actually refresh your memory on how to decompose something into partial fractions, because I just made reference to it on, at the end of the last video. Um, remember that you say equals a over n plus b over n plus 1, and we're going to multiply this part through by the common denominator, which would be n and n plus 1. So those would cancel here, and I'm essentially just doing it on all the tops. Plus one, n, and n plus one. Um, everything would cancel here and just leave one. The n's would cancel here, and you'd have a n plus a, well, one a, um, plus the n plus one cancel, so plus b n. And remember, you go ahead and throw you in a zero, and you collect all your n terms together and all your other terms together. And you make a system of two equations um, and you drop the n. So it would be 0 equals a plus b and 1 equals a. So if 1 equals a, then b is negative 1. So it would be 1 over n plus or minus 1 over n plus 1. And that's how you got, how I got to the beginning of the previous example. Um, and then that's where you start generating your terms. So it's really this series. Um, and that's how it becomes a telescoping series. I felt like I didn't do a good enough job on that on the last one. Um, now we're going to talk about geometric series. Um, and a geometric series is the one of the only two series that you can actually determine what it converges to. You can actually find the sum. Um, most series you either just say, oh, they converge or they diverge and you're done. Um, but for telescoping series, that like the one we just did, you can actually say that it converges and it um, almost always converges to its first term because everything else falls apart. Um, but a geometric series converges to the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. Remember, the common ratio is what you multiply by each time. Um, and that only works if R, the absolute value of R is less than 1. So let's look at this one. And sometimes you have to manipulate them. If we rewrite this, this is really 3 to the n times 3 to the negative 2 over 2 to the n. I can rewrite this again. This part is just 1 ninth times, I can write that as 3 halves to the n. And now I have a geometric series um, where my r is 3 halves. And my first term, if I fill in, um, well, I can't, I, it doesn't matter. My, my r is greater than 1, so therefore it diverges. Because geometric series only converge where the absolute value of r is less than 1. Um, if it had converged, I could then fill it into my formula and actually find what it converged to. Um, this one, if I rewrite it, that's the same thing as 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n times 3 to the 1. I can pull out the 3 to the 1 and just make that 1 third times the series of 3 to the n plus 1 over, whoops, hold on, <laughs> 3 to the n, is it, was it 3 to the n? No, okay, it's different. I was going to say, um, what's going on here? Plus 1 over 3 to the n. I can then distribute my 3 to the n up, and that's 1 third times the series of 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n. Well, um, this is just 1 to the n plus this is 1 third to the n. Um, this one, you got a 1. That's not less than 1. So this piece diverges. You can look at them individually. This piece would converge because r is less than 1, but because this one diverges, if you have one piece that diverges, the whole thing diverges. Um, here's a factorial. Um, this one, the top's bigger than the bottom automatically. 
um, the limit does not go to zero, so it's automatically going to diverge. And then this is a geometric series in disguise. If you break this thing apart, this is 0.9 plus 0.09 plus 0.009 plus 0.0009 plus dot 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 forever. <coughs> this is just a geometric series where my R is 0.1, or you could say 1 tenth. So you could rewrite this thing as 9 times 0.1 to the n from 1 to infinity. And that would be, that actually converges, r is less than 1, so it's going to converge to my first term. If I fill in a 1, I have my 0.9 over 1 minus my common ratio, which is 0.1, and that actually converges to 1, which should make sense because this, no matter how many zeros you get, it eventually does go to 1.